Psycho Killer. 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 Psycho Watch horror movies with me. That's me. I'm the fiance, and this is the horror bandwagon because you forgot to say that in the Fuck intro. Fuck my <laughs> life. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it rolling. I'm gonna keep it rolling. This is gonna. We're gonna keep going, guys. Uh, I did not promise professionalism on this podcast, but my name is Sergio, and my name is Cody, and we are boys for horror analysis, criticism, and spooky, ooky, and sometimes kooky entertainment. And Cody, my dear, what are we doing for today? Well, folks, we hope that you like Swamp Pass and being chased around by leather daddies because we are spending tonight down in Texas. I was not expecting the <laughs> leather daddies part portion <laughs> about it. Swamp Pass. All we're missing are shirtless Johnnies. <laughs> right? Perfect. We need, we're going to try to aim for talking about shirtless Johnnies here. <laughs> that is right, guys. We are covering the classic i believe now cult classic or maybe that's the title texas chainsaw massacre from 2003 or the one that jessica beale is in but we decided we did not want to do this alone mm -hmm. we are going to be tackling this movie we have some reinforcements on 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 site to tackle this movie we have our favorite people people that we love and are genuine fans of and have some of the best names that are known to mankind. And the rumor is that they're Don Tops as a couple. Bridge call! <laughs> <laughs> the rumors are true. We're here. That's the, that's it. <laughs> so I, can't, I can't comment on the rest. Hello. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yes. We're so excited. Very excited. We are so excited yes. and, and honored to have you guys here. We are fans of you guys just from like the get go. So having you here in our faces right now to talk about something, no. it, we're super honored. We just want it to be mushy for a little bit right now. Oh. I didn't get the shirt memo to wear our merch, but I'm glad everyone else did. Thank you for the support, everybody. <laughs> oh my God. You're welcome. <laughs> oh my god i figured that like there would be like some sort of like cody telepathy happening there but it did not right. unfortunately it sorry i was it was a stressful day for me I oh, just, no. <laughs> youtube stressed me out today so i'm happy to be here though to talk about this <laughs> oh good good well guys first off before we go into it how are i mean besides the the rough day how are you guys overall good good, good. we are working on uh Game of Thrones season seven, very Just stressful. Trying to be organized in life. Um, Was yeah. very excited though to rewatch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm ready for all the swamp ass because this is this is a great movie. <laughs> I just can't wait to dive in. You guys need to like fill us in on the Twitch watch along a little bit because oh we that missed was it. Freaking hilarious! Oh my god, it's fun. It was probably the most fun I've ever watched. A movie, a like a movie. because we had the group of people there. People. We're, we're we're getting into it more. Twitch Tuesdays, we're going to be starting. We'll do all sorts of things, but also a lot of times ending on a movie. Amazon and Twitch work together, so we have Amazon Prime. We can watch Amazon Prime stuff there, and we're going to watch a lot more movies. And yeah, we had a lot of fun watching this one. <laughs> you had the you had the movie playing uh, mm -hmm. on Twitch. Yes. Oh, yes. that's so nice. I might have done it wrong, uh, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm still working on it. They have a watch party button and you know it's yeah great. we haven't tried that functionality we'll just yet. Not yet i'll be honest i didn't quite either but we did watch the movie <laughs> and it was fun come watch movies and hang out with us. <laughs> i love it um before we move on do you guys want to take a moment for those who maybe aren't familiar which probably probably should be aren't familiar with you guys where can they find you YouTube, <laughs> Twitter, you know, follow us on Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, and Twitch, because we're going to watch Twitch. movies and hang out on Twitch and react to stuff live. Yeah. Because it's too hard to react to stuff. I love being on YouTube live to play games and scary games, especially. But yeah, you can't react on YouTube live. It's too hard. So they've been really cracking down on yeah, us. Yeah, they're very sticklers about <laughs> yeah. that. I don't know why. They've gotten us. <laughs> they got us gal we used to be so fine we used to be fine to stream things but now nope 
like it's oh harder. no yeah it's for harder. the game stuff or for like watching like, videos no, watching stuff watching, watching stuff like which i get on like the copyright system is very good on youtube to, to catch it and, like yeah. Yeah, live <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. so oh I my get god it. it's fine the gaming's fun though catch me in you know the basement being chased by leatherface Other, <laughs> otherwise <laughs> fuck yeah fuck yeah or playing lego fortnite <laughs> or, <laughs> we don't tell people about the lego fortnite <laughs> oh no i didn't know that there was even lego fortnite i knew that we've exists. been into it for like a week now we have two villages you're welcome to join if you ever want to he's trying so hard visit. to get people to join us you're i mean it's intriguing i, I see the thing is <laughs> i have not been part of the fortnite neither we, are we, we have oh days. okay yeah. so if you guys liked it we're probably gonna be like in the mix soon enough <laughs> yeah we ne- i've never played fortnite in my life until they got lego fortnite and it's a survival thing so it's that's silly. all i like to do <laughs> do you have One to talk to people play. on fortnite no no okay okay so you could literally no, this just, is like, our explore, own private right? world oh, okay yeah. good, good, the good, lego nice. fortnite it's like a survival game you know you gotta build your oh. villages survive people you got to get resources and food and it's and build your own villages up and get better ratings and more villagers and that sounds good that sounds like up your alley yeah it sounds like something i'm gonna spend all weekend doing uh we yeah, feel again yeah we got six more keys to pass you can give up to seven oh. people keys to come and build in your world Yo, nice great. email that this over is such please. a weird tangent for this <laughs> oh yeah I know. anyways <laughs> people are like when are they gonna fucking talk about texas no, the listeners Massacre? are used to this <laughs> Yeah, this it's is only a- like when you had David on. <laughs> <laughs> you know David, it's not when I have to wrangle the conversation. It's back. honestly true. David will literally grab us by our throats and be like, "No, we're gonna fucking talk about this," <laughs> <laughs> which we love. <laughs> we're into it. We're into it. Um, but what we usually like to do, especially for like the podcast, for anybody who is like new coming on, we kind of want to like grill you a little bit. We kind of want to interview a little bit. I'm gonna be Barbara Walters right now and just be like, "All right." Ooh. Let's let's get into the nitty gritty. How did you guys overall start this channel? Like, how did it come to fruition? It was twenty twenty. It was twenty twenty. <laughs> we really? all know about that year. We um, were you're bored. home a lot uh, that year, <laughs> and uh, we we started watching more and more YouTubers, and and we wanted to actually play games. He was like, you know, I've been really getting into these reaction videos and that stuff. Thing. We probably <laughs> wa- started watching Markiplier. And oh yeah. He's like let's just start playing video games and recording it <laughs> and we, so we did. did and then we after we started doing that we started dabbling into music music and movie stuff because i, I love everything but mm-hmm. uh and, and and movies is i'd say overall my favorite thing oh yeah because i love movies I, <laughs> yeah ever since i was like a little kid i thought i'd grow up and be a movie director i didn't know what movie directors actually did though Aww. but <laughs> So I love, I've always loved movies so much. So we ended up just really steering and going towards the movies. Yeah. But it was originally technically games mm-hmm. only. But yeah, I think we started with yeah. Resident Evil. Yeah, Resident and, like, Evil, the one you guys just played, yeah. uh, Biohazard. Oh, oh that was our those, first YouTube those, videos. Oh, it was awful looking. I think it was actually <laughs> no. 2021 when we so started bad. posting. Oh and my yeah, god, that was it was bad audio, bad. It was terrible, but was there's so still fun. a lot. It's funny. <laughs> I hear you. It's like a it's a process. <laughs> like I don't know if you guys were in the same like boat, but for us, it was really like teaching ourselves everything mm-hmm. how everything connected how i i mean long nights where i'm just pulling my hair which is why i'm bald now um <laughs> <laughs> you know? the best of us are it's okay <laughs> there you go sorry and, just... and how did you settle on bridge cow did you like go through a bunch of different names first or was it just like no. it just came out and i, know, I don't I think, think it's good either <laughs> what <laughs> We just we couldn't decide. Ooh. I was like, why not use our nicknames, Bridge we, and Co. Why like, not? Literally, we kept trying. Like, I don't know. It's just it's really weird thing to like. Let's name ourselves. You know, it <laughs> like is weird. for YouTube. But and then we were just like, yeah, Bridge Co. We'll just go old school. You just combine your names. And we did, and it worked. But I they think call it them like couple names. Really kind of annoying, but no, it's just listen. It, it works. We, we thought we were like it oh, works. Oh, the <laughs> first time I'm oh, hearing this. You're getting the exclusive she's, scoop she's right now. Proud of it, apparently. I think we really just chose it because we literally. What, what would you name else. it? What well, I was Nothing. about to ask, like uh, exactly. I don't oh, think okay. we can really come up with anything else. I was gonna ask, like, I wonder if in between that time. 
if you came up with anything else. <laughs> no, I don't think to, so. no, no, we're just, that's that's yeah. not our strong suit, you know, <laughs> titling and branding. Well, and I mean, to promoting. be fair, we can peel back the curtain a little bit. It took us a little while to get to the horror bandwagon. Cause, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, we kept going back and forth. And, and for some reason, I like didn't. It didn't vibe with me as much at first, although I love it now. Yeah, I, I told yeah. him, I was like, what about the horror bandwagon? Because you don't like horror movies, and we want to get you on the bandwagon, but also everyone's doing Smart. a podcast. So it's I like, like we're I jumping like on the, the horror bandwagon. You know? like Yeah. That's, that was my pitch. It. That was my I pitch like to that. Cody. But originally, we were doing like... We wanted to do like a play on words with like something gay. Like there's a podcast <laughs> called Fry Gay the 13th. And I was like, that's, that's amazing. So <laughs> good. That's that's They're so good. <laughs> or like Rosemary's Gaby, who is someone that we follow oh, on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. You could have been Sergico. Yeah, we, there you go. We constantly <laughs> joke about that. I was like, we could have totally been Search Co. <laughs> uh, but did you know? Yeah, I don't know. Bring to it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but Cody, for the longest time, did not know that that meant Bridget and I Cody. It was like I think a, a lot, lot of people, people ha- don't. A lot of people don't <laughs> know that. I had an epiphany one day. I was like, oh, it's the <laughs> names. It makes so much sense now. Yeah, uh, it's like. It works. That's all. <laughs> exactly. No. I think it's fine. I love it. Also, you guys are such a good spot because we kind of trapped ourselves in like the horror bandwagon. So like ah. it has to be stuff horror. I, and I we want you, we once asked like way, the yeah. audience, we're like, would you guys like us to do something else? It's like, no, no. I'll fucking unsubscribe. <laughs> I'm like, all right, guys. The <laughs> horror community <laughs> is passionate. <laughs> Yes, which is fair. It's awesome, but yeah, sometimes you don't ask permission. You just you just do it. Yeah, that's fair. No, but I mean, you guys do you guys do it all, which is which is awesome. (laughs) Yeah, it's a lot. It's fun. We're trying to get more organized. (laughs) Twenty twenty four, baby. Yep, our year to get organized. (laughs) Refigure, configure it all. I love it. (laughs) Do you guys genuinely love the horror genre? I have a feeling like you guys mostly do horror, but uh, do you like it in general? Oh, Oh, yeah. That's my favorite thing ever. How long have you been into horror? Uh, Forever. (laughs) Hold on, our kid. That's fair. Sorry. (laughs) We have a daughter that is supposed to be in bed. How dare you? for me. No kidding. (laughs) Uh, Our tablet turned off, that's why. I Aww. saw, yeah, she didn't like that. I saw Scream. I've mentioned this a lot when I was seven years old, and it was instantly I loved it, and I've got so into it. And I always loved scarier shows. You know, like you know, you grew up on Are You Afraid of the Dark and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, Bumps books. Uh, even before that, uh, I was like natural disaster, like Twisters <laughs> when I was real little. Like it's scary stuff. Jaws, oceans yeah. are terrifying. Everything's mm-hmm. terrifying. That's what I learned from <laughs> movies. Um, so I've always loved it. It's been I'm watching them for sure. Forever. I feel like I remember Bones with Snoop Dogg. Did you ever watch that? Oh, oh my God. Oh, they, someone just brought that up. up. Haven't. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. It was yeah, insane. So um, Jeepers Creepers, Blair Witch, you know, The Grudge really got me when I was a kid. All of that just, I don't know. I felt All the good stuff. It. Terrifying. I love the ride of terrifying things. <laughs> I love it. Blair Witch Project was actually the one that fucked me up a lot yeah. and yeah. it was Did one it was real yes yeah. oh i don't know okay. I, I don't remember how old bit. i was you so we're so young then probably you know like <laughs> well i was so Ooh, curious and and i watched it but then i like threw it in the closet and i was like it's cursed it's cursed <laughs> and my dad had to return the vhs tape oh no <laughs> yeah he was pretty bad but it's a good experience. It's, I, I love telling that story. You know, it's scary like, when it's like, I can't even keep it. Like, no. yeah. please return it. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Give me your, like, quick history on, like, the the original movie and then this one. Like, did you go see it in theaters? Your, if, your history is probably recent. You probably just recently. I feel I like I, feel like I watched this up. the first time when I have God. Maybe like 2008 2009 with my little sister oh <laughs> my god she was way too young and shouldn't be watching it <laughs> High school days. and my dad and then that's it i don't remember seeing it anymore 
Um, <laughs> until that's now. it. Until <laughs> recently. I, I actually never really got into the Texas Chainsaw growing up because I was Scream and then I got into Halloween and then I watched all the Chuckies and I watched all the F- Elm Street when I was little. Um, because early 2000s, they had like Sci-fi. Freddy versus Jason and all those stuff. So oh, I was getting yeah. into all those franchises. Um, I, this was my first Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, the 2003 one. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to see it in theaters because I think I was like 11 or 12 when it came out. Um, but I did see it shortly after it came out. And uh, I have still to this day vivid nightmares about this movie. This movie truly terrified me. I understand. In a, I like this is where like you birth like you go to a haunted house and you, the chainsaw man like I don't nope. <laughs> this yeah. movie yeah nope don't like that uh, the whole grittiness of this one definitely upset me and then like probably shortly after high school about the time I met you I I, I did watch all the original <laughs> and uh, the whole franchise once through and I really mm-hmm. enjoy the original and this I enjoyed Texas Chainsaw Massacre two a lot as well. That's probably but my favorite one. The 2003 one, yeah, definitely terrified me. It was my first Texas Chainsaw movie and stuck with me and is, in my opinion, just as good as the original in, in a reboot sense. Like, it, it's the the best reboot that I think they've made in a whole, in the horror genre. <laughs> I, I have to agree. I mean, I'm in the same boat as you because I... Uh, this was the first one that I started with, which was the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. 2003. It's kind of near and dear to my heart and it's so crazy to think that i mean there were other remakes that came out maybe before Mm -hmm. this one a little bit but this one i think from like a popular franchise an iconic franchise that started the remake craze like like after it for better or worse for better or worse but even then i think this one still is pretty strong yeah i think it's still it's still a ride and it's still something that does scare me maybe not like I, weirdly enough i don't think leatherface scares me but everyone else scares me <laughs> the, the whole movie. situation <laughs> and locations yeah. i think that it also does such a, it's like a very good job of like not doing the original work like beat for beat like but mm-hmm. still yeah. it really has the essence of it all but even from the van to the everything but it's all like its own <sighs> thing well but, and i th- i think it's also an interesting remake because not only was it like the first serious like franchise remake that that really happened but i also when we first watched it because we would have watched this one fairly early on in our relationship as i was starting to like get into horror Mm. movies and it's interesting to watch it again now having seen more of like Saw and some of the other movies that came out around <laughs> this, this one time came too, like a year before Saw came out. But I, I think it's interesting to see, like, it feels very much of a a product of its time, but in a really good way. Yeah, that mm-hmm. like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre was it was it was I think more disturbing than it was scary. But this one was like they made it scary and they did a really oh, good yeah. job. Agreed. Totally. Yeah, it's like the best of its time. So <laughs> it definitely is it definitely is a product it of its time, up. but it does hold Especially up. for early two thousands. Really funny. Yeah. I also just recently double checked into it after we watched it, actually earlier today. Uh the the alternate intro and out, uh ending to this movie. Oh shit. Sure. You know there was one. No. Mm-mm. Like and it it, it it takes place though like more like decades after, like more modern day ish, and it's uh like the Aaron, uh, she's like in like a home, and they like the police come to investigate her, and she's saying like they didn't get the right guy because the autopsy they said he had two arms and he only had one arm because you've seen the movie yeah. and what <laughs> happens to him. I saw the autopsy photos, but it wasn't him. And then and then the ending is like a follow up to that, and like the police are going to raid. And I only say that because it felt a hundred percent like a Saw movie. Yeah. Just the oh police, my god! The way the police are coming in and re- like it was like it this was is so a Saw weird. movie we're watching right now. All Everything it needed was the, the, the green lights. Um, I'm so glad they didn't use saw. that intro or outro. It was not very good. So, yeah, but, that's added a little bit. You can watch too it on much. YouTube. You look horny. <laughs> it's, yeah. I think if they would have added that to the movie, it would have ruined it. It would have possibly <laughs> would have ruined, ruined it. it. Again, I think this is a nice tight like what I think it's just a little over an hour and a half. But yeah. that's yeah. all I needed. 
No, it was per- good. Perfect as I, it was. It's, it's got like some loose ends and stuff, and like yeah, some tightness, and uh, but it's still overall awesome. <laughs> Have you seen the prequel? Uh, once in theaters, I don't know if I've seen it since prequel. Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Beginning. No. <gasps> yeah, I snuck into theaters to see it because I would get that came out in two thousand six. I would have been fourteen, and my <laughs> brother worked at the movie theater. And I snuck in because yes. it was R-rated. And then he's like, he, I got caught, but they let me stay. But he was like, hey, they got Matt. Stop doing that. <laughs> like, just tell me. I'll get you in. Oh, Don't my God. Sneak in, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but uh, I remember enjoying it, but I don't remember it nearly as much at all. We should watch that one. Soon. Yeah, I don't remember it as much either. But I don't remember I, either. Th- I want to say it's as gruesome. I'm pretty sure you have not seen it i've not seen it that wow was the joke you just I like said making. bullshit right now. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you people oh my 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 all right guys so let's get into our first segment which is body appetizers segment and this is the segment where we talk about the movie itself and give you guys a little bit more info so we're pretty much going to just throw information at your faces right now um so texas chainsaw massacre 2003 it was released on october 17th 2003 nice halloween movie for those goers there budget was uh, around over 9.5 million dollars opening weekend was 29.1 million dollars ended up grossing Overall, a hundred seven point three million dollars. Wow, that's very impressive. I feel like I think so. Yeah, like, I think that's really good. A twenty nine million opening weekend, like that. That's good today in horror. Like, and that's twenty years later. So, <laughs> and how much? Um, nineteen seventy four to two thousand three. I can't do math. That's thirty nine years. Thirty nine years. No, twenty thirty one. Yeah. I, okay, we're not asking math questions anymore. <laughs> uh, but it's been a while since the 1974, and I think personally, I think that's what had something to do with it was that there was such a big gap since the original one. I think the hype yeah. to see a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say I've just found out about this movie because when I was. 11 my mom watched et entertainment tonight every day of the week yes. and then i remember watching like the entertainment tonight like segment with jessica beale and they're like they're filming the new texas State. i was so excited for oh my movie. god i definitely remember seeing the trailers i remember oh, yeah. when the trailer was coming out they those stuck with me mm-hmm. and but i don't think i saw it in theaters i think i rented it a million times from blockbuster <laughs> fair oh, r.i.p r.i.p there's still one open still right i think so I think. In like oregon or washington which i don't know how the, that business is going how do they keep it afloat <laughs> it's so like, weird. maybe they I have video know. games more oh than my god <laughs> i don't know so the movie was written by scott caser who wrote the crazies the haunting of hell house uh well no not the haunting of hell house i think this is the he wrote a few episodes of The Haunting of Hell House yeah. by Mike Flanagan. Uh, yeah. I can't say this word. The Machinist? Or Machinist? The Machinist? The Machinist? Oh. Never mind. The Machinist sounds I, uh, so wrong now that I say it. I also the thought it was Machinist. Move on. <laughs> 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 the Amityville Horror Remake, oh. which is just like... The Ryan Reynolds one? The Ryan Reynolds one, which is just like a horny gay teen boy <laughs> dream. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, I just have vague memories, and it's all just angry-looking Ryan Reynolds in like sweaty a sweaty and hot, shirtless, sweaty. chopping the wood, yeah, chopping the wood, <laughs> shirtless, and his pants are literally at like you can see one pube like right? coming right out, like wow. literally. Wow. <laughs> what? And we haven't so watched funny. this because. Oh yeah, we need to watch it. We need to get you into Ryan <laughs> Reynolds. So all we all remember tonight. of it anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> so <funny. laughs> Uh, but he also wrote a few episodes of Bates Motel as well. So he's oh. got a pretty good repertoire. Oh, my Dude, the, all I didn't know any of that. <laughs> and I love, I, well, I did, I've never seen The Machinist, but otherwise, <laughs> amazing stuff. I want to say The Machinist is the one where Christian Bale like lost a, 
a bunch oh, of weight. I heard about that. I've never seen. And he was like skeleton looking. Very, very, yeah, yeah like un, an unhealthy amount. Oh yeah, that was dangerous. They lost. <laughs> very dangerous. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good repertoire. We haven't seen Bates Motel, uh, both of us. So that's actually a show. A good one. So good. Oh. A show we might do for the channel. So we're excited about to. that. Well, I'll be there to watch a hundred percent of the time. So it was directed by Marcus Nispel, who actually did directed the Friday the Thirteenth remake. Have you guys seen that one? I did. I saw that uh, in yeah. theaters as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I love that one. I personally like the remake. Sorry, if, I, don't, I, please I, don't throw tomatoes at me, people. I, 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 <laughs> I think people have really come around to it. Like I think uh, I've seen articles where people like it's very underappreciated, and Good. I. I don't remember. I remember the like the it had a pretty long opening sequence, like like solidly long, like yeah. longer than you would expect an opening sequence to be. And that's what I mainly remember of it. But that uh, I think that one was solid, and I'll, I'll, I want to revisit that as well. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we have Pathfinder. He also did National Treasure. Well, he he was the second unit director for National Treasure. <laughs> Just so he, I, I don't I don't want to take that away from him. <laughs> what? But he was part of that. The movie's too good to leave it out. I get it. <laughs> um, but so far, so good. And, of course, it was produced by Michael Bay. Uh, that was which, the most shocking part to me. I know. Is it because there wasn't any huge explosions in this movie? Probably. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Dude, honestly, how I could crazy have, would that have been, though? I could have asked for a, an explosion in this movie. You could have so. easily fit one. Car in. chase. Oh, for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing, none of that. But the, I didn't I notice like... the Michael Bay on it, but the movie looks amazing. So I want to say, and don't quote me this, but I, I think Michael Bay also did the Friday the Thirteenth remake. Like he produced it too, mm -hmm. which then in itself you could probably make like some sort of horror cinematic universe. The Michael Bay horror. The cinematic Michael Bay. <laughs> You could. I, I, I would watch. I think that was a missed opportunity in the that early two thousands. It's never too late. That's Michael Bay. Get on it. Even though I think people hate Michael Bay at this point, I, but I think so. <laughs> but the cast. Who is in the cast, Cody? Uh, someone I've never heard of named. I think Jessica Biel is. Ew! I hated that you said like Biel. 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 Ah. Jessica Biel is Aaron. Uh, we have Jonathan Tucker. When are the seventh heaven three actions coming, guys? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Jonathan Tucker plays Morgan. Erica Learson as Pepper. Uh, Mike Vogel as Andy. Eric Balfour as Kemper. David Dorfman as Jedediah. Arlie <laughs> Ermy as Sheriff Hoyt, and John Larroquette as the narrator. The Any... original narrator. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I did. I just found that out today. You could tell. I, did, he, I knew it was like the same yeah. essence, but I just yeah. got confirmation that it was the original. It's kind of crazy that they were like, hey, bro, do you want to do it again? And he did it again. He just re-recorded yeah, it. Because he could have yeah, easily just taken it and pay, copy and pasted it. But yeah, yeah, that's the, cool. The, it was his um, first role was the narration. And then I guess mm -hmm. he went on to be a pretty known actor. I don't personally know him but like he's on night court and stuff and yeah we still came back to do it so that was cool nice touch at the time of watching this were there any uh anyone in this cast that you recognize and were like oh my god um i knew jessica beal right. but i didn't necessarily care no honestly <laughs> i know i know jessica beal's name never saw her face i don't know how i never i've never seen her face <laughs> you never seen anything with jessica beal i don't know Honestly, try to name this? another movie that Jessica Biel is in. There's that one where she flew airplanes. <laughs> Wait, she did? Really? Soul Plane? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe. I'll check it later. <laughs> oh, my God. No oh. shade on Jessica Biel. <laughs> I can't Biel. think of Jessica Biel in anything I besides know. Seventh I Heaven. Don't know. That is, yeah, you can't count Seventh Heaven. I feel like that's too easy. No idea. Wasn't she married to Justin Timberlake? Wow. That's right. Wow. I've seen it. Crediting a man for her success. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, I credited Seventh Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, wait. We yeah. just saw a movie with her in it New Year's Eve. Oh, yes. Have you seen that movie? 
No. It's not good, but okay. it's it takes takes place on New Year's Eve and lots of celebrities oh. are in it and Jessica Biel is one. Can I Google her? Don't hold on. Jessica. <laughs> Cody's like, okay, cut this out. Cut this out. <laughs> right. No, no, it's fine. Chuck and Larry. Oh, I haven't Andy. seen that. Blade That's Trinity. Blade. Oh, yes. You should have known that. Blade movie. You, you, you and everyone watching this and listening to this should know that unless I, 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 I don't know like actors' names in anything. Mm-hmm. Cody like, oh, is it's the, that person who did that one thing. Cody is notoriously bad at faces. I am too. I'm bad. <laughs> I'm bad at faces I'll remember the I'm face. Names. I won't remember your name. <laughs> Nope. Well, I I th- I want to say that what's his face Eric Balfour I definitely recognized him because he he plays the the boyfriend Kemper mm-hmm. or no they they didn't get married sadly uh, or uh, w- engaged but Eric Balfour I definitely saw him in other movies and I want to say spoiler alert I want to say he's in one of the first few episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But we'll, we'll we'll get to that when we get to it. <laughs> but up. but I don't know if you me. ever wished to see Eric Balfour naked at all. But Eric Balfour, no. <laughs> <laughs> let me write this down so I avoid it. <laughs> Eric Balfour is in a movie where he goes full frontal and oh. has okay. actual sex in it. He oh. goes. He goes yeah. the full There's mile. There's a specific name for those kind of movies. Oh, is that- <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I can't I tell you the movie, oh, but oh, is it lie with me. I think so. Yeah. yeah that was the top one. Is that a naked person? <laughs> Wait, do you see it? An outgoing, sexually aggressive young woman meets and begins toward affair with an equally <gasps> aggressive young man. <laughs> oh, that definitely it. it. It's it. That's it. That's the one. Was that Jessica Biel? <laughs> no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um all right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on for every <laughs> Ron Tomatoes for this movie is um a 37% for critics and audience score is 58%. Do you think that's be a tomato tomato meter critic because they suck? <laughs> No, yeah, no, stop it! Stop it! <laughs> I think they de- I, they this movie wrong, but... deserves a little bit of a higher score for sure. Yeah, yeah. I would give this at least in the seventies. Yeah. Um. So some tidbits for the movie during the scene in the van with R. Lee Ernie, who plays the sheriff, and Jonathan Tucker, who plays Morgan. So cool. Tucker forced the gun down his throat in order to make himself vomit every take. If you watch carefully, you can see him spit the vomit out of his mouth in the scene. That's Not a little too it. much. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Why? I mean, this almost feels like a like perhaps a doth protest too much scenario. If you're just like really trying to deep throat this gun just mm-hmm. to like be a method actor for the scene. I mean, it made him look. I'll believable. say, you know, I would we watch this with some terrifying. people and they were like, some people were kind of saying like, ah, the acting's not good, which I kind of disagreed with. Yeah, yeah. But even the further it went on and the more distressed they got in, especially from the sheriff mm-hmm. like i believed mm-hmm. him and i felt it i like, know in uh, that like that scene you're talking about i yeah. felt that was like that, he was, was it the morgan real. guy you said terrified yeah like that. yeah morgan yeah when he was oh and oh the the effects and the and that well band. you can tell that he just threw up because when he put, points the gun down he's like blah, 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 blah. You're just yeah. like, he's just like yeah. slobbering yeah. everywhere i'm like yeah. wow like, that's acting. authentic so yeah. I guess yes. you know what? Maybe it was worth it. I don't know. <laughs> it made it very memorable and upsetting and gave me nightmares. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Erica so. Learson screamed so loudly during her screen test that people in other parts of the building called the police to report that a woman was being attacked. That's a <laughs> the nice. I guess that's part of the, I wonder if that is part of the audition process for like horror Aww. movies. It would I mean, have do you, to be right. Yeah. I do you really so. want to like hire somebody and not make sure that they have a good scream? Like, I don't ah, have a good scream. Ah, I can't be in the uh, They'd be like, "Oh, really? You're supposed to be ah, terrified for your life." Oh, oh. <laughs> no, but that sucks because I I don't think if I genuinely had to scream, I don't think I would be able to. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, mm, I, I would be too actors. embarrassed. That's why I can't right? be an actress. Yeah. I'd yep. be so embarrassed. Me do you too. have a high pitched scream? I don't think I do. No. I don't know. I have never tried oh it. Gosh. We all have to have a scream off us, but the whole group. We need to get everyone together for a scream off. Oh my god! Yes, that's <laughs> Who has the best scream out of all the channels? The scream queen challenge for the Ooh, ultimate like scream it. queen. Wait, yeah. I love that. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> um. So after learning about the remake, Andrew, I can't pronounce his last name, but Brianarski, who plays yeah. Leatherface, went up to producer Michael Bay at a Christmas party and personally asked him for the role. Was like, bro, I'm Leatherface. Look at right me. here. Look at me. Come on. To prepare for the role, Brianarski ate a diet of brisket and white bread in order to get his weight to nearly 300 pounds. Brianarski would later reprise his role as Leatherface in the film's prequel. Nice. Huh. I like brisket. I don't think I would solely eat it for a month, but... I'm sure I love your cup. On the way, but hey, if you liked it, it, and you're in Texas, I'm guessing oh, it's probably really good. Oh, I love that. That is amazing. We love it. Do nice. you want to show yours? Oh, yes. <gasps> where did you get these so Custom made one of one of our viewers sent it to us uh look under newsom's treasures and okay. they have some really really great stuff over there mm-hmm. all right i'm gonna hit, <laughs> hit them up hit the- I, love <laughs> I love a good cup <laughs> Um, on his final day of shooting, oh, this actually tracks. Eric Balfour stripped down, threw his wardrobe back to the crew, and walked off the set only wearing a baseball cap. Footage of his departure is shown in the making of documentary on the special edition DVD Blu-ray. This kind of shit would get him canceled today. Oh this yeah, is like, right. You can do that right. <laughs> Inappropriate. Calm down. Like, still, it still would if he's if he's actively acting. <laughs> oh my god. But that what a way to go, I guess. <laughs> So I don't know if this was like a Mandela effect for you guys, but so there's a deleted subplot detailed Aaron being pregnant, which was why when they went to Mexico, she didn't drink the water or smoke the weed as they talked about in the final cut, Um, which apparently it doesn't make. But for some reason, I always thought that they mentioned that she was pregnant in the movie. I don't think so. But they don't. don't Right. No, although that would have actually been a really interesting subplot because then it would explain a little bit more why she took the child back from the family. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that makes more I, sense I don't now knowing that, that this was there. Point, I just saw comments saying something about her being pregnant. Oh, it was probably when we were we were Watching looking that, at the deleted yeah. intro and outro scene. So I think it had a bunch of other deleted scenes in oh, there. Oh, probably part of that. That might have maybe maybe you saw it when you rented it and the the extra features and deleted scenes. <laughs> that that could be. <laughs> maybe I did see the deleted <laughs> scenes. Because yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there were. I guess there was some um some mention of it and like other that yeah deleted, but. I don't yeah. remember that, but it would make it make more sense. Otherwise, because, all right, so Jessica Biel, and you think of, like, the text chase of 2003, and you're like, she's iconic, you know? She's the yeah. final girl in that. And then I rewatched it, and I was kind of like, man, she's kind of an asshole. She got everyone <laughs> killed. <laughs> she, she's yelling at people for smoking weed in Mexico. Like, what did you think they were going to do in Mexico, Jessica That's Biel? That's honestly fair. That's <laughs> if she was pregnant, clear. I would have been like, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> To avoid an NC-17 rating in the USA, the more graphic shots of Morgan's death were cut. The original version of the scene featured the shot of the chainsaw slicing into his crotch and then having intestines and blood falling out of him. The cut version cuts away when the chainsaw is about to cut him and totally cuts out the intestines falling from his body. And the hitchhiker death was also cut severely. The original scene was has her ear flying off of her head and blood and brain matter being more right. dark in color. Um, so okay. pretty much, the, yeah. The hitchhiker scene was fine as it was. Uh, it's yeah. still yeah. really disturbing as is. <laughs> I'm right. still well, shocked every time. It was. Also, <laughs> it was with Morgan scene and Leatherface picks him up and we thought for a moment he was going to use the freaking chandelier as the hook through yeah. his back. Oh, yeah, yeah. would have been crazy. Like, but then when he started everywhere. doing with the chainsaw and I noticed that they kind of off camera a little bit cover it up. Um, but I was like the precursor to the Terrifier. I was oh, going to yeah. say the same like, thing. I'm like, and yet Terrifier. Mm-hmm. 
made us watch the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. Amy and Leon would have gone for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre directed by Damien Leon. Let's, I let's, would watch it. Let's get that. Let's get that rolling. <laughs> you know what else I read? Um, the kid, which I believe is the kid. Was he the kid from The Ring too? I believe. The I Jedediah. saw that in his credits. Yeah. I think that was. Yeah. Um, I read that. Um, they were going to originally have Leatherface kill him too <gasps> after he lets them go by. But they were like, it's, "We can't. It's too graphic." I'm like, uh, ah, "I don't know." Might as I well. Like no, we can't. <laughs> Terrifier. Terrifier is giving you everything that they they right. thought was too graphic yeah. these days. So. <laughs> so film critic roger ebert gave this film a rare zero stars <laughs> calling it a contemptible how do you say that contemptible Co right. ooh, i said it contemptible film vile ugly and brutal there's not a shred of reason to see it those who defend it will have to dance through mental hoops of their own devising defining its meanness and despair at style or vision or a commentary on our world. Oh, he thought he was reading with this. He's like, oh, you're gonna you're gonna justify this by being like, oh, this is a commentary on our society. He came for our throats, guys. Rush it beyond the grave. Oh my god. <laughs> well, he was wrong, but <laughs> Oh my god. Which I want to say like everyone, Roger but... Ebert has notoriously at least through the 80s definitely when A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th were coming out was like these are fucking trash movies, <laughs> which I mean there are, but that's what they why we love them. Um Right. And I just wanted to mention this the soundtrack included bands from Pantera, Soil, Shadows Fall, Static X, Hatebreed and Motor Grit Grader. Yeah, oh, early two thousands. Fuck yeah! You know why I put this because I bought the soundtrack to Freddy vs Jason when it came out. <laughs> oh, did I know any of those bands? No, but I was <laughs> rocking out to it. Bring early two thousands horror oh, movie soundtracks, <laughs> my best. Even like the Scream soundtracks, they had like harder music videos and shit. Yeah. Scream three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so that was our bloody appetizer segment. We are going to be right back. We're going to take a little break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about the movie itself. So stay tuned. Welcome back, ghouls. It is now time to go into our Beats and Potatoes segment. And this is the segment where we actually go into the movie itself. So we are going to start off with just our overall thoughts of the opening scene. Um, first, first, it starts off with the regular documentary, right? And I got to say, this was the first since this was the first one that I saw. This made me think it was absolutely real. Like, I was like, this is too real. I'm about to see like people get killed that are real life out there. <laughs> Disturbed. Yeah. Yeah. Dial up internet. I had to search for the true story behind the movie. <laughs> That's how I learned out about Ed Gein and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Inspires a lot of horror people, but um, yeah, the, 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 the documentary style alone is so creepy. The music it even starts with the score in the, in the is mm -hmm. so good Theory. and it sets the tone so perfectly. They're going on the stairs. You got the the claw marks really do oh. with the, the nails, mm -hmm. which I love that they get back to that. Like it, yes, in the yes. movie, you mm -hmm. see it happening and it's like, oh yeah, okay. Oh, oh my god. god. I actually think that it's a really inventive way to open the movie because not only does it like scratch that true crime itch that a mm -hmm. lot of horror people have but it well, doesn't have that when i was little but ahead of its again. time yeah <laughs> so like it, it almost makes you think like could we do this with a movie today by instead of having it be more documentary you like open with a like true crime podcaster who's like filming like oh i gotta tell you about this story or whatever well they kind of did it with halloween 2018 they sort chucky of did but Ch chucky season one <laughs> Devin oh yeah the, yeah <laughs> yeah See, they're kind know, of inter different, implementing but... it a little bit more uh yeah. nowadays i want like a found footage one though 
you know, like full on found footage podcasters that are just like that's almost how this felt the found footage style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then they just play Sweet Home Alabama for like eight full minutes, just Fine. nonstop. <laughs> on our way to Skinner. On their way to Skinner. <laughs> they were like, in case you didn't know, this takes place in the seventies, guys. Right. We, we wanted you to know this is seventies. So which I, I gotta say, give any hints. I gotta say, I think these are the least seventies looking cast yeah. people. I think they're they're a little also a little too pretty for, for my like, for my liking. Right. Also, they stayed sweaty Maybe though. Morgan. <laughs> Uh, first off, yeah, Morgan kind of looked seventies because of the glasses yeah. and the hair. Mm-hmm. But the boy, what was what's the boyfriend's Kemper? name? Kemper. Kemper. <laughs> With two thousand. It was literally movie. a shirt and a trucker hat. Like right. What? The two thousand. Jessica Biel. She she also looked like. No. This was from two thousand three. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Could be the pants, the bell bottoms. That's the only thing they had. <laughs> they tried, you know. <laughs> They're like, good enough. We'll play Skinner in the back. It'll be good. <laughs> the van scene. We get the hitchhiker. In, in the van. Way different. Yeah. <laughs> Way different. This was not this like creepy. But again, like for us, this back. is our first, this was our first uh, Texas Chainsaw. So mm-hmm. this is our original Hitchhiker. <laughs> this original uh, Hitchhiker, which is quite a way to like, It. Re- I feel like once this happens, it's we get like five minutes or maybe two minutes of a good time. And then it just, it's dark and gloomy the whole freaking way yeah. until the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a real tone setter. I just had a really dark thought about how, like, because I, I think that this was a really great way to just like launch you into the movie. Like, it's record scratch. Like, you're done now. But the record scratch made me think like she's about to pull the trigger, and then you just hear record scratch. I bet you're wondering how I got here. I would watch that. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> like it, it's not their story. The the kid, the other it's, people. It's hers. Honestly, it's, I did want to know her backstory a little bit. I, I kind of want to see because it sounded like she was it obviously was, a victim. Yeah, mm-hmm. it sounded like it was pretty bad. Well, um, she was. Wasn't she the mom of the kid who was kidnapped? Yeah, yes. that's what yeah. they that she said. You stole her baby, so that's what's implied, at least I believe. Yeah. Um, she gave birth to a gun in that van, though. She sure did. That was impressive. Um, no. I can't. I can't. I was gonna be like, "Is that possible?" But we don't need to discuss the anatomy of how to get something inside <laughs> I there. You know, I just we've all seen Pirates of the Caribbean three, so we know that it is in fact possible. I didn't see that. What happens in that? What are you People talking about? I'm kind of concerned about the reference. What happened? He he said it when we saw it, and I was like, I don't know what happens. So in, in Pirates of the Caribbean 3, um, Kira Knightley's character is like she becomes a pirate lord and everything, like so cool. Spoiler whatever. alert. And um, and so they go to this like pirate conference and they have to all turn on their weapons at the pirate conference. And there's and she- a <laughs> Yes. <laughs> literally. In a Disney out, like, movie. This massive gun. No way. Yes. No, wait, how long? Tell me. It, it, it's it's like this long, very, <gasps> very like wide around. No, I don't believe Go it. Go watch it. Hero Knightley? No, it sounds anyways. comical. I do. <laughs> it's like one of those old timey giant yes. one shot guns. Yes. Do you have so to funny. make sure that the safety <laughs> is on? Like when you put it in there? I mean, unless you want to live dangerously. Because, like, what? <laughs> anyways. Before we get demonetized for this one, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, comparing the the opening at least to the original one, which one would you prefer? Essentially, like does does one kind of counter the other? Scary question. That's well, okay, <laughs> I was more uncomfortable and like ugh, with like the original, obviously, because he's a freaking weirdo. <laughs> and then, but like I was disturbed with yeah that scene that's she it's 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 the camera pullback through after Ooh, what she yeah. does that just makes it such an iconic scene to me it's just it's, it's a it's, completely different character that they did with it yeah and it's a different yeah and it's not know. family it's just a victim i mean one she's like don't go that way that <laughs> that camera going through the through the head and I just watching them scream as you, yeah. as it goes, and then the head tilts back. <gasps> ah! So so good. Yeah. I like. I love it. It's just like, yeah. yeah. The hitchhiker it's, in the original is iconic, but 
there's something special about that scene and what yeah. it does for the whole movie. I like enjoy the setting the tone and the the switch there. <laughs> more messed up things, and I do <laughs> pre- prefer this one. But like, I don't know. It was really bad. Oh, <laughs> see, I I agree because this was it was very gross, and I did not I mean, like the, it. The worst but... part is that there was still there was. Throughout the movie, you see like gunk it's like, yeah, it's and still brain. Like yeah. Yeah. The, the Morgan scene later when he has to move, <laughs> he like you wasn't yeah. sitting center with the shot, oh, oh. But the, and he like moves it with his hands. Ah. Yeah. But the one thing that I think that this does better than the original is explain why they have to like stop and why they they can't really go much further because. In the original, I mean, you could argue there's enough of them there. They could have, like, pinned down the scrawny hitchhiker guy and just, like, punched him in the face and threw him out of the side of the van. Mm-hmm. But, like... <laughs> they were really I mean, panicking. <laughs> just, but in this, like, you have a bloody hole in the back of your Oh, your don't I know window. about bloody like, holes. you can't... Um, <laughs> we're moving on. You can't, like, just keep going. You're going to get pulled over. Right. And yeah. if you just dump the body, you're not going to be able to explain it, and you're going to have a bad time. So, like, it makes so much more sense where they're like, we have nice. to go talk to the police well, I mean, and get this. Even though the whole time I'm watching, we were like, just, I would have left the body at the tree. I would have been coming. It's like, leave it, just leave it, just go. That's like, what we that said. Point, or, like, I it's guess you 70s. could just, like, pop out the back, the back windshield entirely mm-hmm. and just keep going. Yeah. I don't know. Ooh. I mean, this is kind of the start of where Aaron starts to be like, you guys, you, we got to stay help. here. You got to help. She has a family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the start where you as an adult i guess now because before i mean growing up i was like jessica field did it and she does do yeah. it in my opinion <laughs> but now you're like aaron girl we oh, gotta yeah. go we let's could... just leave aaron. It's... <laughs> and the fact that i never knew that the other girl that was there and i want to call her by name what's what's her what's her face pepper mm-hmm. pepper I totally forgot that she was a hitchhiker herself. Like she doesn't yeah. know these people that well. No, fact- she just was met the day them. They knew each other. They're all making out in the back seat. Yeah. The fact that she stays as long as she does with them, I am surprised. Yeah, she didn't have to. She yeah, just walked away. Them. Where would she have gone? <laughs> get- she, the she middle took- of nowhere Not in there. Texas, <laughs> <laughs> trying to hitchhike again. Well, right. <laughs> she took the long now road for that me. D. That's why she was like, you know mm-hmm. what, this guy's worth it. I gotta stay. I gotta stay the course. <laughs> um all right so let's talk about the cast what do you um we got we talked about the main cast members but overall the other other ones so like we have the woman at the at the gas station mm-hmm. we have the sheriff any of them we have um i want to say is their cousin or uncle <laughs> just the family i in think general any, there. you can say any relation and it will st- the family. It'll, it'll be correct <laughs> yeah, right. yeah 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 you're right cousins, wife husband you know. same thing, <laughs> grandpa uh yeah. how did you feel about them uh amazing they were <laughs> perfect na- ugly gross people they were they definitely fit the tone of the, the family. sheriff was terrifying yeah, arlie he Ermy as the me, sheriff he is reminded the, me of the some, actual villain like right like a rob zombie uh, oh that's character. a perfect description Bridget's like, a huge rob zombie fan and it, his his character almost does fit almost like mm-hmm. the the halloween remake yeah. i'm surprised yeah. he didn't, he didn't cast him in impressive. one of his movies i know i'm right. shocked because he he's really good yeah the well, sheriff is insane and amazing um yeah i for a long time was like i need to see this man in like a romantic comedy i need to know that he's not this character you know like he's pretty aggressive in everything i've seen him in but i saw (laughs) i saw him in like uh an interview and he was like i just love being the villain it's the best thing i just love it i'm so good at it and i'm like he's real he's real real. he treats his wife terribly No. Probably is such an amazing person. I know. He's probably <laughs> super, super kind. But I mean, he does a freaking phenomenal job in here. He gets under my skin whenever yeah. he's on here and just he's just so gross. The things that and apparently he improved a lot of his stuff. All the dialogue in that sequence when they're wrapping up the body was all ad lib. Young patrolman, I used to love wrapping up these young honeys. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Jesus. Okay. So it, so he is a villain. He was a villain. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but the funniest thing, and it could—I know it's disturbing. I know, but the funniest moment for me 
is when he's in the cop car and he like out of nowhere smacks Morgan in the face with a bottle. Dude, and I was yes. that came trying out of nowhere. And I'm like it's so, yeah. And then his teeth fell out. Uh, oh, oh my god. Yeah. He's yeah. The true villain and he's Wait, the truly ah! terrifying one. <laughs> Even though obviously Chainsaw Man is scary. Well, yeah. Um, I do love they still kept that intact too of like his personality. You could see he's still just like almost stressed and like mm-hmm. a kid almost. Yeah. Um, about it all but um uh, definitely stand out there while we were watching it live uh we were watching the scene where he like she got him out of the tub and like he was he was like limping oh and yeah. some, someone was like he got three teeth knocked out and he can't run and I was oh my god um, i liked his character the other family like uh the the, the gas station lady she was good she had a good Okay. I feel like all of them had a good feel to them, even like the grandpa and stuff. Mm-hmm. I do feel like they did kind of just abandon them then, and like nothing <laughs> happened to them at all, and they're all fine and alive later yeah. on. But which kind of annoys me. I did hear also while we were watching it live that um, the trailer ladies, the ones that had the baby, yeah, I was. They, somebody told yeah, us that that was that. um originally like a single role, just one person. But both oh. those actresses were so good that they put them both in there and just kind of split it into two. Honestly, they, they were, are so good. Uh, they are were they just similar. like town people or were they? No, family? they were just I don't, oh, extended no, they part were, of the family. Yeah, they were extended they were part. Definitely family. Oh, when when that phone call when that phone oh rings, I you literally didn't was have a phone. <laughs> she was like, I, I thought you didn't have a phone. I was yeah. like, bitch. You fucking lied to me. I would have gone off on her no matter <laughs> no. how many drugs right? in me. I would have grabbed her with that and smacked sleepy her in time the face tea. with the phone. <laughs> oh, um, she, she was too good. baby eating beans. Oh, my that God. Baby. That baby. That baby. Yeah, yeah oh, I no. forgot about the little kid, too, which I brought up about the little ring kid that was in there as oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Grandma, <laughs> let me in. <laughs> they didn't let him no, in the house, get. so he let the ki- their prisoners no, go. Get. So. so here's the question. Is he, like... A bi- uh, like a biological child of the family, or you think that he's another kid they just stole? That's a good oh, question. I never even that's thought about that. Such a good question. I don't know. That's well, a, he that's is very good... different from them all because he ends he... up saving. Well, not saving right. them, but like tries to save them. Yeah, he, yeah. he helps her. He helps her. Yeah. So maybe you're right. I, I, I would. Because be I always assumed that the reason they were taking the baby is because they were all related and they couldn't like create a child together. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if that would. In my head, that's probably what happened. Yeah, he's probably stolen, even though he calls a grandma and all. But he's mm-hmm. just a baby. Well, that's stolen, probably what he was used. To, yeah, but they don't Ooh. let him in the house, and it's, it's weird. a whole other story. See, I one thing that I'm I'm very scared about is the idea of cults. Now I know mm. they're not really considered a cult, but like they're kind of like this whole town that you kind of feel right. trapped. No matter where yeah. you go, someone's out to get you. And I mm-hmm. hate that feeling, which is why this movie still scares me whenever I watch it. Like I can't be cleaning and watching this movie, you know? Like <laughs> <laughs> It's too stressful. <laughs> too stressful. May I also just say the house, the house in this one, it, the look is terrifying. And that's a real house so that just looks just like that, by the way. I would and love. it's just, it, it's an actual working farm. Is it still up? That's the house. Yeah. And they have oh. signs to not come up. You can take pictures from the road, but they're like, we're a working farm. Don't come up here. Like, we live People here. People live here. Yeah, <laughs> but it looks alone. just like that. Like they didn't even make it look creepier on the outside for the movie like it actually if you google it it looks like that now i think that is to do horrifying full restoration on it now but yeah imagine <laughs> being the people that live in there now oh God. that would just suck just living <laughs> yeah. in there. imagine just having to drive by there when, if i saw this movie when i was 12 and then i saw that house in real life i can't oh. i would i would die no it no, would no, be haunted no. and everyone would be it looks scared of it so intimidating i kind of wish we like exploded exported a little bit more but yeah. It's still, yeah, it's still fucking horrifying. Some improvements, doors. though, like the the tone's still there, and like, but I do love like, especially like the leather face door, yeah, his big huge. door. It has so much Super more weight huge. to it than like the original. Like, it's it's that's a big door. No, <laughs> a, did you hear about the door. the the shade between the original leather face and this leather face? No. no. Apparently they like hated each other or like they not hated each other, but they like there was some animosity was like between them because there there was like a video that came out where like Gunnar Hansen was like making fun of how 
<laughs> There's that leather face. It's those a very face closed leather face. the door. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, girl. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I don't care. I love the door itself. It's just, <laughs> the door did its job. Yeah, right. <laughs> fucking did it. Um, right, let's go on to Aaron. How do we feel as of Aaron being the final girl for this movie? Do you think she does a good job? Besides the fact that she keeps everybody there. <laughs> See, that's what we talked about a little. <laughs> like at first, like originally, I think yeah, but then I'm like, as we watch it now, I'm kind of I see like, come on, Aaron, you <laughs> fucked up a lot. You're uh, what's his face? Um. I forget his name. The one who uh, was on the hook that she had to finish off. Oh, he Andy. is uh, Andy. Andy. Uh, I felt bad because she's like trying to lift him and he's like, no, stop. Like, don't stop. Just, stop touching like, him. <laughs> she's just making it worse. What I see, it was like, oh, well, I could have gotten out. But now that you did that, it's even worse. <laughs> so please kill me. Oh, was, my God. Was rough by that point. Also, when but... her and Morgan <laughs> ran into that cabin and she wide open, opened the door and he's like, like he probably wouldn't notice if she wouldn't have opened the door so quickly. <laughs> but by the end, I still think she was a boss. She was a badass. Yeah. The cutting off his arm. He was going to oh, leave her. Yeah. She was hiding in that locker and he was going to leave. And she had that like, no, like, we got to finish it kind of. She called him back. Mm -hmm. And then she got his ass, and then getting the baby, and then what she did to the sheriff at the end. Yes. Unforgiving. Oh. So by the end, regardless, she still is iconic and yeah, like even a though top she did find a girl, in my opinion. She yeah, she did cause everybody to be in their situations and kind of was there for the we didn't see the death of Kemper for some reason. I always thought that we no. saw him get his face sliced, oh. but maybe we didn't. We but see him preparing, kind of. We see I him guess. preparing it, but that scene where, like, he turns and it's her. her... <laughs> oh God! What would you do? What would you A do face. if it was Cody's face and you were like, "Shit, oh. my pants," <laughs> <laughs> and probably have a heart attack? That's such an that was uncomfortable scary. shot. That's that was uh... a, another shot that stuck with me since. That's I was another it, that happened. I'm happy it didn't another... keep looking like that, but just for that <laughs> one instant and like the uncanny. And then I think I brought it up on the stream. I was like, it kind of almost reminded me of the ending of Sleepaway Camp. Just the jarring. The oh head, yeah, the face. It's not like matching, but you know that face. It's but then like it's all like, wait what? Yeah, just and it gave me another valley moment. Rob mm -hmm. Zombie movie effect with. House of a Thousand Corpses. Have you seen that? We haven't. No. Oh, okay. No. We, we, that, that's definitely on our list. <laughs> We're so planning good. to do the the Rob Zombie because that's. It, I don't know if it's considered a trilogy, but they have like mm -hmm. a thousand mm -hmm. corpses, and then Devil's Rejects. Yeah. And, three from and then, hell. and which one was that? Three, three from, from hell. hell. That one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think, yeah, it's I think. The, It's the Firefly trilogy. They're called the Firefly, Firefly family. Oh, it's so good. We're definitely going to cover that. That's that's an interesting. It's definitely watch. a Texas Chainsaw feel to it. Like okay. He was definitely inspired by mm -hmm. Texas Chainsaw. You could feel it so good. in ways. <laughs> it's very all, it's different. a very Rob Zombie movie, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think okay. I got. I don't know if you feel the same, but I want to give Jessica Biel her props. I think emotionally, I think she was there. And compared to her work in like Seventh Heaven, which was, <laughs> I don't think it was like hard, but like, I think this, she had to really fucking do it. And I think she was crying the whole bit. And she did a lot of cardio because she was running her ass for like, she had like three different chase scenes in this movie. Right. <laughs> no, she killed it in that that sense for sure and like you said in like the the trailer and the emotional bits of her <laughs> with everything. <laughs> so good. She did good. <laughs> Is there? Oh, let's talk about Leatherface himself. How do you feel about this one? This one scared the shit out of me. Yeah, <laughs> he did. I much, don't know why. Much like the door, Way he's more... just girthier and <laughs> yeah. thicker and scarier. Oh, yeah. He's a big scary boy. Creepy. Yeah, I, I, way more than the first one. Obviously, I still give the original looks. I like the looks overall better. I'd say at the end yeah. of the day, but, but, this, but one this one fits. Feels style more mean. Does, no yeah. emotion. No. Ugh. Well, I always I I. The way I compared them is that, like, the Leatherface in the 1974 one seemed a little bit more human. Like, you can definitely see that this is just yeah. a guy with, like, yes. a face and being weird. Yeah. But, like, this one in 2003 seemed more like a monster. Like, yeah. was, there was like... a lot less of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I, I agree. I think that the 1974 one, um, he, you, 
you almost felt bad for him because you could see like the family like mistreated him and yeah he oh, yeah. And, and he like he was at least portrayed as mm -hmm. uh having uh, having a lower intellect if not some sort of like intellectual mm -hmm. disability mm -hmm. right and right. and this like this bubba was like the enforcer of the family yeah like he he was gonna come and fuck you up and not apologize. Oh, that's and for sure. It made it it made it much scarier because it was like at least like in in the original you like you you could you could empathize with him a little bit, but mm -hmm. here you're like you just gotta run. You gotta run and like There's hope no you way. get away. No way. Yes. It's the only times I've still felt that same from the original was um, the parts where Jessica Beals in the basement going around and he keeps going around just looking through oh, cracks. Yeah, and he like he was kind curious. Of still so giving much. that little freak out bit yeah. moments. But otherwise, yeah, like it was straight. There's divorce. one scene in particular. I think it's in the slaughter's house scene where she's hiding in one of the lockers and you just get oh, like a yeah. pan into him and he's like looking this way. Mm -hmm. And oh, he just looks so menacing he He's just looks scary. so scary yes. oh how do you feel about the mask off though oh oh he's bit, like the, voldemort the right mask off moment yeah, yeah he just or like, like skeletor voldemort. what's what's the what's the <laughs> who's the villain in captain america oh red the red skull? skull red skull there we go yeah, that was yeah, actually that was very red skull <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i, I think it's okay <laughs> it was at least it just was, a brief moment and they yeah. didn't keep it off so yeah. it looked really weird <laughs> it did it was, it was in the dark like his though his face was melted off <laughs> um all right let's talk about the kills any favorite kills in this movie oh hitchhiker <laughs> <laughs> it's the scenes it's I the whole know. scene it's, it's the pullback true. we're talking about that's one of the best it's iconic. kills in this movie i think it it's is. very very iconic well, I'm, I'm going to Bridget. I have the deaths here for you to see. Okay. You remember. Oh, thanks. What, do you have like pictures? No, just, no, just a list, list of like how oh. they died. <laughs> um, I'm going to say the sheriff. At the end the sheriff. The sheriff. The end. Yeah, for yes. sure. Absolutely. Ooh, I don't know, man. It's tough from there. I do like Kemper getting the hammer, uh, same, Ooh, same yeah. as mm -hmm. the original, the quick hammer and the drag away. It's intense and upsetting I, I will say there's something about that 74 one that i like which is the does he like shake when he's like at the bottom when oh yeah he's just like, yes. no, oh, it's, it's that, that was too real, real. yeah yes. was, can't do it <laughs> that really bothered me in there because no. i was like Ugh, ew. Yeah, no, 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 no. yeah it's funny though yeah the sheriff and the one at the very beginning are probably the best because some of the the chainsaw ones are off screen a little bit like pepper like it's they're they're very awesome effective scenes um but yeah poor andy got done dirty though with the the hook and then she lifted him and then rehooked him and <laughs> oh and, and then, then had like, to kill him, him and the then stomach. stabbed him in yeah. the middle of the stomach probably the slowest death you could have <laughs> oh my god like, come on though no, I, speaking of terrifier because we talked about terrifier before uh bubba did grab some salt and put it like on the, yes. the stump the meat and i'm like dry okay aged, bridget called it i was like he's dry aging it <laughs> he's just making it for later <laughs> saving it you know smart <laughs> proactive that right. leather phase proactive prepping his food um i want to say the for if it comes to disappointing kills would be pepper i think because hers was done like off screen like she we yeah. just saw bubba go Grrr. the more, yeah. the more yeah. big part of that is his turn to see or, that's uh, the part Kemper's yeah face so that is definitely probably the most disappointing. right yeah and well, did i just have effort too because they're both in the van and he's on the roof going crazy and she gets oh. out and he just said fuck it just started chasing her ass yeah like, i'd be so mad like what there's someone else over there <laughs> honestly that me? that's the most accurate thing when it comes to playing the game because i feel like that that's something that would happen to me i'd run and then fucking they see me and they right. grab me yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh my god um <clears throat> oh do you have a preference because the so the two movies even though like i feel like 1974 is pretty disturbing it's not as gory as this one so is is there like a preference that you that you have like do you prefer let's do the gore go full on or do you actually like the tactical like let's not see as much i personally 
more gore the better no <laughs> i'm so weird i so i prefer newer movies i guess with more horror with mm -hmm. more gore but like the originals so good yeah <laughs> i don't <sighs> I don't That's know. Hard. I like I respect it. I do really like it doesn't have to show anything. It can be just as good for sure. Yeah. But there's just something more ah like crazy it's, and like intense about yeah. watching it when all of a sudden you're seeing something so crazy. So Yeah. They're, they're just almost a different experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although mm -hmm. I do think there's like there's really no way to win for like someone like me who doesn't <laughs> who so doesn't... dainty and you know i don't like gore well because like i i don't like gore i famously hate gore um, well this but... movie oh has something God. that we both hate which is nail gore yes uh, no nails we mm, saw bad. the nail come up if this movie was made like a couple years later there would have been nail gore and somehow a chainsaw would be like centimeters away from an eye yes oh yeah <laughs> Yeah. It's like the one thing that this People was missing. Flashbacks. <laughs> but, oh yes. But even the even like the original where it was less gory, it also seemed so much more real. Like yeah. yeah. Like the, the the especially like the twitching of the body with the hammer in it. Yeah, that's like an added touch yeah. to it. Ugh. I yeah. feel like because they didn't have as much, and it just felt mysterious. Because you you, you can't show so much. Yeah. They they. they they're so creative and like in depth and like other ways to mm -hmm. upset you with seeing less, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Ugh, I don't know. So yeah, gore can be a crutch and just be like, it, it's not good just because it's gory, right. but if it's good and gory, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it comes to the ending, do you personally think that Aaron should have lived? Did she yeah. deserve to live? I mean, <laughs> so after everything she put her friends through, <laughs> they would have all left she said no and now she's the one leaving alone that's oh, not fair yeah However, no i wanted i like i'm very satisfied with the ending the way they did it um even though like i said like a lot of people are kind of uh, the other family members are kind of just alive and nothing bad ever happened to them the main guy villain the sheriff there yeah, well, you don't at, know. The, at the end they said that there was no sign of them right didn't they say that in the documentary ending part of it was like well, they were like the yeah they never recorded. no no one was ever found or anything I like think, what so. where did they go wisconsin um, like the wisconsin I, massacre i still do love her being able to save the baby yeah. to get the to, to do the fake out with the truck and the oh, actually yeah. taking the cop car oh i love that um i was very i it's very satisfying and again like i love that they didn't just they they do things different from the original that like it makes it its own thing but it's i think it's just as good so i i i'm pro let her live let's get a legacy sequel. No, we need a one armed yeah. leatherface or Ooh. we get leatherface with the the chainsaw as his arm <gasps> you know in That's the taken. 80s aaron and the, jessica biel <laughs> stop <laughs> it right now in the 80s jessica biel could do it <laughs> yeah i think it could do it Is i believe in the late it 80s it'd be great i love eight ladies set horror aesthetic movies. yeah oh, i thought you meant like or... their age is 80. no no oh, oh, like, yeah. not like well, last like, year's netflix face. chainsaw when they bring sally back oh <laughs> that I was still find that to be i don't care it's disrespectful maybe it's <laughs> hilarious it and was it, the it's, most it's so entertaining uh, uh, that insane. that 2022 one where sally was didn't even like <laughs> fucking <laughs> What the fuck, Sally? What are you doing here? Why go are home? You, why did it, you it even get meme. her out of her house to do this? It was, the, I, it was the Thanos. I don't even know who you are, meme. As you yeah, just and then like, she uh -huh. and then picks her up like nothing. <laughs> it was uh, wow. Have you guys Gone seen the 2013? 30. I gotta ask real quick. The the text Which chainsaw was 3D. Oh, I saw it in theaters, but I have not seen it ever since. And Cody has not seen it. Nope. Please watch it. Okay. Which one? It's bad. You know one. Uh, it's bad. I want to say it's bad, but good. I. It's like you don't be think wrong. So. <laughs> bad, but, bad. but he hates watch it. it. No, there's there's some. Po there's not very many, but there's. You, if you look, you'll find some things like that was cool. But overall, I just want to watch like, other people watch it now because it saddens me. Oh. Anyway. Well, so back to the <laughs> question. I I actually don't know if I feel that Aaron should have lived because yes. I feel like like she was just kind of stumbling around for the first half of the movie. She literally was the reason that they all got stuck there. She like 
killed her friend in the worst way possible to put him out of his misery. She was like kind of the the reason that most of the people ended up getting killed. And then all of a sudden she turned into Aaron from your next and was very resourceful out of nowhere. I right. don't buy it. <laughs> I like like it, she she we want to talk about plot armor. She had plot armor here because I think she was just very lucky when it came to the slaughterhouse scene where she was in the in the locker. Like oh. she would have been done there, but mm, she was very lucky she where would've. she was positioned and that <laughs> Leatherface just didn't know where to turn. And <laughs> now, I do like the badassery, but yeah, I do I mean, agree. I, but that's I appreciate one thing about- it. It just it feels like it came out of nowhere. Like it wasn't. <laughs> we just got this throwaway line from the beginning where they're like, "Oh, did you learn that in juvie?" I do feel like it. Like it, there was a sudden shift that felt unearned to me. Although I, don't know. I do appreciate, like, once she starts becoming badass, like, how can how can I anybody... think a final girl should be allowed to stumble and bumble a little bit and then get herself together? I know? mean, sure, <laughs> maybe, but I just like it, it. It feels too much to me that like where was any of this at the beginning? Any of the resourcefulness, like making a weapon out of whatever? I don't know. I feel like more could have been I done. I get it. Those are all my same complaints about Laurie Strode <laughs> in Halloween, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. I get it. It was, it's so, it's so. <laughs> so, it's how, so Sally Hardesty in the original, she just ran around and screamed the whole time, and that is exactly how she escaped at the end, by running and screaming just through yes. the window. So she did stay consistent there. I guess that. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just Hollywood in their shift to making badass more badass final girls. Yeah. yeah. And, and I appreciate a badass final girl. Like I said, it's like I, I'm not I'm not really at the end of the day complaining because I, especially like the revenge on the sheriff is very satisfying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I just wish that like we could have had a little bit more than one throwaway line that comes in handy when like she needs to be resourceful because <laughs> yep, she's yep. the only one still alive. Now, if you could replace Aaron with another character that that and that died, who would it be? To be the final? Yeah. Or wow. easier, who do you think who would you revive from the dead? Hmm. The hitchhiker. <laughs> she oh. ends up not killing herself. It wasn't fair. She just stays there with them and then she ends up with her baby and takes him away. You know what? That could I love that. Satisfying. I love you know, that. I don't hate that. <laughs> That's actually a perfect, I perfect lost choice. The she doesn't kill scene, herself but... because she has to go find her fucking child. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, now wait. You're <laughs> yeah, now you're shit talking. Yeah, now you're shit talking. Wait. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait <laughs> let's, let's turn around. Let's. let's... <laughs> That's, so funny. That's funny. No, but anyway, yeah, she doesn't do that to herself. And then she's like, I'm coming with you. We're going this way. That's a whole other story. Yeah. You're no, I hear you. Me to fight these people. And they all die she gets her baby and they leave i i I agree i think the only one out of the group of friends i don't know i do feel bad that her boyfriend died i know and he had a ring he had a ring i know Uh, they didn't need to do that to to us i know they just they just had to stab us in the heart with that. Right. They were just like, oh, by the way, they were going to get engaged, actually. So, And she'll never At know. Skinner concert. She'll never really know. High. Nope. When she goes to the mental institution, she'll never know. Never. <laughs> oh, that's right. Leatherface got the ring. She didn't even get it. Oh, he looked at it, too. Son of a yeah. bitch. Why didn't they he let her like, find it? Yes, I will marry you. <laughs> and they become one. <laughs> they become one. Yeah. <laughs> How messed up would it have been though if Leatherface <laughs> took his face and then like got down on one knee? No. <laughs> no. Will you be my leather, mommy? <laughs> my leather mommy? My leather mommy. Leather <laughs> mommy. I love that. Um, I still, I'm gonna be gung ho about putting Aaron in the game. I do still, oh, I absolutely. do want her. As oh a, yeah. I want this. I want the house, ma'am. Mm. I want everything. I will say well, the other thing that's a little more disjointed is like they just kind of throw in that we go to a slaughterhouse at the end. There was like no other Where real to go feel from? to it. I don't the feel slaughterhouse like. also looks a little too modern. Like it looks. It was right. very clean. It was yeah. very lit up. Yeah. <laughs> There was uh the the slaughterhouse just was uh, an extra set piece that they went to because they had to. It looked I like feel. maybe some people were working and that could have. They were like, "What's going? What's going on over there? Do you hear somebody in here?" <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Um, Why is there an arm on the floor? 
<laughs> it wasn't in use. They had a lot of meat in there, so mm-hmm. it was an in use factory. Well, fun fact they apparently budget wise they couldn't come up with anything fake for the for this scene and they actually used real meat the, the everything in yeah. there is real i didn't and know that it was a real factory but <laughs> jessica beal is a vegan and oh no oh, that's probably the worst horror for her yeah. ooh, <laughs> ooh. in the whole movie you felt that you felt, so <laughs> I felt her pain me. for a minute <laughs> um and then be- before before we end this segment um Comparing, and I, I didn't mean to compare the original to the to the remake too much, but which one do you prefer, or like comparing them? I know they're two different vibes, mm-hmm. but they end pretty differently. Mm-hmm. And I, in my opinion, I think the 1974 one is a little bit more iconic than the 2000. Oh yeah, for sure. The the I, I think it's hard to yeah even make an argument. <laughs> that it isn't more iconic the original mm-hmm. because of the leatherface look that run down the driveway at the end the screaming just Ugh. jumping Ooh. through that window the family dinner table mm-hmm. grandpa sucking fingies <laughs> <laughs> um i think yeah i still i think the 2003 like you we said earlier was is it's a 2000s horror movie but it's like the best of one of the best of the 2000s yeah so it does feel like it has its different datings it maybe doesn't super feel authentic at times and i think it it's iconic in its own ways but in like a cult classic kind of iconic way whereas for sure the original is just pop culture all time iconic (laughs) yeah no yeah everyone remembers that scene where she's laughing hysterically in the in the back of the van all bloody like Mm -hmm. girls been through it Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, you can't honestly forget that. But this one definitely has, like a, I think, a cult following to it. 2003 um, would be probably the one, though, I would sit down and say, if I'm going to watch one, I'll probably put that one on first just as an entertainment. Yeah. yeah. I think that's fair. <laughs> I think it's because I I don't know. I don't know if you guys get. I think this one's a little bit more of a straightforward slasher. Oh, my yeah. Um, yeah. Than the 74 one. Yeah. I think like that's more. why I like it. This one's like more more fun or like rewarding to watch fun? because you because <laughs> you have that like that that arc where she's now fighting back and and yeah. you you at least get like that that satisfying you get that revenge. ending. Yeah. yeah. The revenge, yeah. That's what you want. It feels good. Anything else you guys would like to comment about the movie before we sign off on this segment? No. No, it <laughs> holds up. It's, it's still, it's yeah, it's iconic in its own way. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to take another quick break and then we're going to come back and finish this off with our ratings. So stay tuned. Welcome, everyone, to our final segment, which is Desserts. And this is the segment where we talk about our ratings. Mm -hmm. So first, how our ratings are, are one, zero to ten scared Cody's on how scary it was. Mm -hmm. Or two, which one should we, what should we name it? Is it too dark to say uh, the JJ handguns? But JJ handguns? Mm Mm-hmm. I think what? that's a little too hard. So we want to we we want to. So, <laughs> so we rate how scary it is on on a on a scale of scared Cody's, and then from we we rate how much we liked the movie overall. With we pick some sort of thing that's related to the movie. So yeah. leather daddy, oh. zero to ten leather daddy. Okay, we can. There we let's fine. do that. Let's, fine. Do, let's do that. <laughs> but <laughs> JJ guns. JJ. Oh my god! Oh, you said. But JJ, I, did. I thought you said I thought you just said JJ, and I was no. like, "What is a JJ gun?" <laughs> nope. <laughs> I didn't want to just like come out and say vagina guns. I felt like right. that was too much. <laughs> it's too improper. Um, Who's a pussy gun? 
fuck. <laughs> That's worse. Pussy Never gun. Mind. Wait, That's no. Worse. Worse. Ew. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so zero to ten scared Cody's. How scary was it? Uh, let's start with Bridget's rating for this. Mm. I'm gonna say a good six. Okay. Six Cody's. <laughs> No, Cody. I don't know. Cody. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I might be letting a little bit of my childhood bias in here. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Oh, wow. I don't know. Something about that sheriff, something about the tone and the settings and the actual places scared me as a kid. Still creepy and upsetting. I think Listen, to this day. I I'm gonna agree with you on that. I'm gonna give this an eight out of ten scared Cody's because of the same things. I hate this kind of cult mentality where everyone knows everybody and they're just going to be like, follow our rules. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't do it. So yeah, eight out of 10 scare Cody's. I, I think I'm going to do a 7.5 um, because it is really scary. Like when you're, you're out in the middle of nowhere, there's nowhere to go. Everybody knows each other and it's a giant conspiracy to get your, your meat. And I don't, Get my meat. <laughs> what did you get? Well, because, oh, to get my meat. Like, yes. okay, okay. To get your meat. <laughs> and so I um it, plus like between that and, and the gore, and even though we cut away from a lot of the kills, they were still they're still pretty scary. And and Leatherface himself is uh, a scary guy. So yeah, seven point five feels scary right. Scary guy. Scary guy. Scary boy. You know right. what I would rate the wetness in this fucking movie? Oh. Ten out of ten. Oh yeah, Texas basement's never been so wet. It's but it's everything's m- musty. Wet. <laughs> everything's sloshy and flooded. It's weird. They're like it's hot in Texas. Nineteen seventy-four. Well, your water's in the basement. <laughs> 19, yeah, why is it flooding in the basement? Know, what is happening? Know. There's like a pool. So what? But <laughs> nineteen seventy-four is like so like dry it's Very like you dry. know it's hot yeah. and dry but like this one seems like it's soggy humid humid <laughs> i don't know people word. i smell bo in the air like i just know it i just know There's it smell in mm-hmm. that van for sure yeah <laughs> yeah especially um, with the brain matter oh i can okay. only imagine zero to what? ten leather daddies <laughs> Le- no not leather daddies leather overall leather score daddies. Overall score of this movie. Let's start with Bridget. Eight. Ooh. I love it. I'm going seven overall. I, it's amazing. It's a great <laughs> 2000s re, whole reboot without mm-hmm. just completely remaking it. And they did their own thing. A few things are a little disconnected mm-hmm. by the end. I feel like I said the, the slaughterhouse was kind of thrown in a lot of the other characters. I enjoyed them, but then they just kind of had their little moment and then were just got away at the end sort of without the baby. But <laughs> it's not perfect, but I I think it's a damn good. <laughs> Seven out of ten leather daddies. <laughs> Cody. I think I'm also gonna give it a seven. Um you know it it wouldn't be the first movie that I put on, but if we were to watch it I wouldn't like start doing something else or like ask to change the channel because overall it's 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 an enjoyable watch I, I especially you know the element of of aaron getting revenge and taking out the sheriff and rescuing the baby and like finally getting away from the family i do believe that for you i feel like if it ended on a like darker note where aaron mm-hmm. did die you would lower yeah, yeah you yes. would you would hate <laughs> this movie uh wait you said seven seven, seven out of ten I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 uh, Leather Daddies. I really like this movie. I, I'm i still gunning for Jessica Biel in Aaron, as Aaron as Final Girl, even though she is problematic now. And my adult <laughs> eyes, I see it. I apologize <laughs> for her. Um, but uh, And it's just, it just scary. And Leatherface, it made me scared of Leatherface. And no Leatherface, and I think I think this is also just nostalgic bias because yeah. I did grow up with it. Um, but still, I, I I know people out there who like hate this movie. You think they're like it's trash, but I will <laughs> I will defend it. So Same. yeah, <laughs> would you recommend this movie to beginners to horror movies? Uh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If someone came over, said, was like, "Dive in." Want to watch a horror movie? Scary movie? <laughs> Let's do it. 
Let's put this one on. I think yeah. it would depend on a few factors. Like, are we talking about like a younger kid trying to get into horror? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to have the same nightmares I have. <laughs> This is giving like you've never seen a horror though. movie before. Let's watch Terrifier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's borderline. This is a little better, but like you're not far off. I feel like almost. No, oh yeah. my it's god! Definitely, I would definitely say it's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. But if you want a real get to get to know what horror and slashers feel like, yeah, yeah, you you're gonna you're gonna be unsettled and grossed out at times. And I feel I would I would do a double feature. I will do the 1974 into 2003. Because they almost couldn't be more different in right. so many ways, like yeah. filmmaking ways and what a horror movie can be. It's like the same thing. Right. You definitely you get two, two different, different ways of doing it in a good way both yes. times. But I agree. I, mean, I think that's I like the, main, that. the main reason like that. to do that that way. Mm -hmm. um, would you have liked horror? Because I started Cody on our road to for him to like is Scream. I started with the movie mm -hmm. scream mm -hmm. but if i started you I with do it. texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> would you have kept watching i think i would have gotten through but i wouldn't be as enthusiastic probably overwhelmed <laughs> yeah because oh, yeah. oh, this this it throws a lot at you and i think if you it, if you're not the kind of person who like will resonate specifically with the revenge story and like getting that back then it'll just overwhelm you with like the grossness and the the fact that like these people basically get trapped in a commune where everyone is acting against them and you can't be safe with anybody so like right. you yeah. can't trust you can't trust the truck driver that pulls up at the end you can't trust anybody and um it, it, for someone who like has never seen horror before i don't know that i don't know that it would like be enjoyable for them if okay. we just if you just That's put fair. them like in a chair, the Clockwork Orange eye things on, and we have to watch oh this movie. That's fair. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely Look, agree they're going to find out quick by the end of that <laughs> band scene if they're cool with it or not. That's so. true. It won't I'm take too out. long. It won't take too <laughs> right. long. Um, all right, guys. So we have reached the end of the podcast. We have to thank so, 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 so much to Rich Co. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for hopping on thank and talking so much you. for having us. You guys are truly amazing, and you crack us up. Um, <laughs> Likewise. One last time for the viewers, where can they find you? Or listeners, whoever's listening via podcasting. Find us Bridge Co. on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. TikTok. Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitch. Twitch. TikTok. It's usually Bridge Co. 1. Yeah. <laughs> Twitch. Insta Twitter. Yeah, I said all that already. You have... Everyone patreon and <gasps> oh my god yes. yeah there's a lot of things we <laughs> got a you. discord oh yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> see we're so new at this it's been like three years <laughs> well <laughs> you guys popping off everywhere <laughs> you guys they are so freaking close to 100k followers over there so please so sp spread the gospel of rich <laughs> <laughs> yes spread us everywhere Sp spread them as much as you can spread us <laughs> <laughs> but um for us we are the horror bandwagon mm -hmm. you can follow us uh at the podcast form that you're listening to this on or on youtube where we have reactions and we have more podcast episodes and stuff like that um you can follow us on instagram at the horror bandwagon or on twitter slash x at horror bandwagon no the um what else Oh yeah, we also have a Patreon. We do. We have Patreon <laughs> at the uh, slash the hard bandwagon. We have YouTube memberships where we go live. We have scary streaming Sundays, uh, where we're playing until dawn. Mm -hmm. We're restarting that up. So hopefully you join us for that. But until next time, we have been your shores for hard analysis, criticism, and spooky, okay, and sometimes kooky entertainment. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.